Hello everyone, and welcome to this guide about Windwalker Monks in 9.1. This will cover all the important aspects of building your character as a Windwalker, including covenants, talents, soulbinds, and much more. And if you're looking for a one-stop shop to absolutely crush your opponents in this new season, look no further than Skillcapped. Over on our site, you'll find guides that perfectly follow up this entry level guide, including our world class courses that walk you through everything you need to know to bring your Windwalker Monk gameplay up to the level of a pro. There, you'll find videos on how to deal damage, how to set up kills and win games, and exactly how to execute your specs playstyle to a standard that only the world's best players understand. In addition, weekly releases of arena commentaries allow you to keep up with the ever-evolving meta and learn how to take down some of the most difficult matchups. And if that wasn't enough, skill-capped members get exclusive premium access to our Discord server, where you can question our team of pros with anything you need to know, all from as little as $4.99 a month. Starting off with the ratios, both factions have a clear winner for win Walker monks. Horde players will be favoring the orc ratio due to the power of hardiness. Having every stun be reduced on you, especially when you're a main kill target, makes this ratio undoubtedly the best one to have. Blood Fury is also a nice addition to have during your burst damage windows. For the alliance, the best race to choose will be human. Picking up extra stats is nice, but more importantly, you'll pick up the human ratio trinket out of stuns, allowing you to pick up the relentless trinket in most matchups. You can also use double trinkets against niche compositions, having two ways of escaping devastating stun setups on yourself. Without further ado, let's get into the talents you choose as a Windwalker, covering all staple and situational talents to choose from. The starting row is picking between Eye of the Tiger or Chi Wave, depending on your own personal preference. Eye of the Tiger is a good default pick as it requires no attention or extra binding to use, as well as giving extra pressure. Chi Wave will require an extra binding, but it can be used to have an easier time keeping your mastery up. It can also snipe totems such as Sky Fury Totem. At row 25, Tiger's Lust will be your staple pick, breaking roots on yourself regularly in order to increase your uptime, thus increasing your pressure. It can also be used on your partners to help them get out of root effects too. On row 30, things get interesting as Rezus believes all choices here are viable. Ascension will be the easy to use one, being a passive increase in energy regeneration which could be more alt friendly. Fist of the White Tiger is another common choice as it's the natural PvE choice. It gives a bit of pressure and generates 3 chi, making it easy to use Fists of Fury. Energizing Elixir is more of an unconventional choice, but Rezus personally likes it. It has good synergy with Key First Skyreach, refunding your energy quickly in order to keep up with elusive targets with more ease. Right now, Ring of Peace will be your main choice on row 35, being incredibly versatile to use. It can deny uptime of defensive cooldowns such as AMZ, Darkness, Barrier, or even Earth and Wall Totem. It's also great to use to interrupt casts from healers, increasing your pressure immensely or using it to interrupt CC or high damaging spells from other casters. You can also use it to knock a ranged target into you, allowing you to land a double leg sweep with ease. Lastly, you can use it whilst kiting, preventing the enemy team connecting on you if placed well. The row 40 choice is optional, but most of the time you will probably be choosing Diffuse Magic as most compositions consist of heavy magic pressure, making this the best choice. It could also be used aggressively in niche situations, removing roots from yourself if you have no Tiger's Lust when playing super aggressively. With the Maledict Trinkets making a comeback, Diffuse Magic could also be used to counter it as well, making it even more useful. Damp and Harm can be used against heavy physical damage compositions such as Jungle Cleave, which will be more effective than Diffuse Magic in these situations. It can be a bit less reliable due to the nature of the spell, but it will still be your best choice against high incoming physical damage. Inner Strength isn't taken too much right now, but it could see more use later at full gear levels where you're naturally tankier against certain pressure. This could be useful in 2v2 situations or low burst comps in 3v3 where you want to passively reduce pressure. At 45, we have another obvious pick that you'll stay, being Dance of Chi Ji. It's simply doing a significant amount of damage, being much more valuable than the other two choices here, increasing your burst and passive damage by a ton. Lastly, at row 50, Whirling Dragon Punch is the best talent here, giving you a ton of extra damage during passive or burst damage windows. It also increases in pressure with AoE damage, making it excellent in both brackets if you can hit multiple targets. Serenity could still be a viable yet gimmicky choice, used if you feel like you can't win normally and you want to try to burst someone down rapidly during a serenity. It's basically bigger burst damage on a longer cooldown, losing out on having passive pressure. This concludes the normal talents you take, meaning your talents should look something like this, with rows 15 and 30 being more up to personal preference. Row 40 will be a situational tier as well, with diffuse magic being your usual go-to. Whirling Dragon Punch should be used nearly all the time, but if you're feeling lucky, you could use Serenity for one-shot potentials. Knowing your talent choice is one thing, now you'll also need to know which PvP talents you should be using as a Windwalker Monk. Let's start with the three most common choices you take generally, being Alpha Tiger, Turbo Fist, and Reverse Harm. Alpha Tiger is basically a constant bloodlust for Windwalkers, increasing in strength when there are more targets to use Tiger Palm against. You can proc it from anything, such as totems or any pests, resulting in a significant damage increase for you, making this PvP talent hard to replace. 
Creating a heavy snare, pressure, and being able to parry all melee attacks during your Fist of Fury channel makes Turbo Fist mandatory against any melee compositions. It could also be used in knee situations such as using it to parry the hunt from demon hunters. Being able to increase the healing and damage you do from reverse harm makes it a nice bonus to have, allowing you to gain enough chi to use Rising Sun Kick. You also gain extra healing, which will keep getting stronger when you gain more stamina as well, increasing the power of this PvP talent. Another powerful PvP talent for melees is Grapple Weapon, which should be used against the likes of Death Knights, Rogues, and Warriors to stop their offensive cooldowns from being too devastating. Ride the Wind is a niche pick, only needed against Frost Mage teams or when implementing very aggressive strategies when killing healers. It's useful against heavy snares, but it doesn't stop root effects, which is why it's not great in most situations. Tiger Eye Brew can be excellent against heavy armor teams such as plate users, male classes with shields, or even against destruction and affliction warlocks due to their demon armor. It can also be used to bypass through Blessing of Protection, making it a nice pick against paladin teams with high armored partners. From the new PvP talents, Perpetual Paralysis looks like it could have potential use in certain matchups, but right now it doesn't seem to be worth using over your other PvP talents. That being said, it's a new PvP talent that may require time to use at its maximum potential. That covers all the useful PvP talents. Moving on to the best covenants for Windwalker, which you have two to choose from. The first one is Kyrian being the more offensive one. Weapons of Order is a powerful offensive cooldown for Windwalkers, giving you a ton of pressure with your already powerful offensive cooldowns. Using it well at the right time can make it difficult for your opponents to survive. File is also a nice lifesaver now as it can also get rid of the new Maledict Trinket being a nice bonus for this covenant. Necrolord is coming into play now, being the better defensive choice as well as having Bone Dust Brew for your offensive cooldown. It may be less powerful than Weapons of Order, but it's on a 1 minute cooldown making it have better synergy for Windwalker aligning with your Leg Sweep cooldown. Fleshcraft is a nice way to help reduce your damage taken giving you a nice absorb shield. The defensive soulbinds from this covenant are also a big reason why it's a powerful choice but we'll get into that later. To compare these covenants, both covenants are good with Necrolord being the better choice overall. We think Necrolord is gonna be better as it's a stronger defensive covenant plus you can burst more often than Kyrian due to the difference in covenant abilities. Now that we know the covenants you should use as a Windwalker monk, let's discuss the soulbinds you can gain and which soulbind trees you should use in the arena. For Kyrian, Pelagos is gonna be your favorite due to the extra pressure from combat meditation buff, considering mastery is a nice stat that Windwalkers benefit from. Path of the Devoted looks very powerful for a 30 second cooldown. It's a nice defensive option to have damage reduction outside of stuns as well as allowing you to run away with a mobility. Newfound Soul is also a nice addition for Windwalkers, allowing them more tankiness and damage as well. It's not out yet, but if it procs at a decent rate in arena games, it will be quite powerful. Forge Light should be used only when you need Sparkling Drift Globe Core. This is great against stealth comps that can kill you quickly in stun windows such as Rogue Mage. Effusive Anima Accelerator could be a very nice bonus for Windwalkers, allowing them to get weapons of order potentially every one minute. Maroleth is the king here. Ooze's Frictionless Coating is a nice bonus to self-survival, being excellent in stun windows. Ultimate Form is very powerful giving you more self-healing when using Fleshcraft, as well as being immune to CC being able to time it well to avoid crucial CC. Undulating Maneuvers is a nice way to absorb initial damage, being great against teams that try to burst you down from 100%. It helps not to drop HP too fast. Oozling also gives a nice bonus to pressure as well as give you more healing. And many could be used if you want to utilize Sulfuric Emission against heavy burst teams or stealth teams that try to global you. It's basically gonna help significantly against melee trying to 100-0 you in stun windows, which could buy you time to live and use defensive cooldowns. To finish off your soulbind tree, you'll need to place the most powerful conduits in the most appropriate slots. So let's discuss which are your best potency, finesse, and endurance conduits to use in your soulbind trees. Starting off with potency conduits, coordinated offensive is your best conduit here, buffing a big offensive cooldown that will be handy throughout any arena game. Calculated Strikes is your second best potency, buffing your spinning crane kick pressure being highly valuable. Your third potency conduit will depend on your covenant choice. For Necrolords, your third best is Bone Marrow Hops, adding to your burst damage windows again which help quite a bit during your leg sweep windows. As for Kyrian, well, Strike with Clarity will be your third best for the same reason, adding to your burst damage with your Covenant ability. Finesse Conduits are generally your weakest conduit choices, having only two good picks. Tumbling Technique is your first pick as it can increase your mobility, making it a tiny bit easier to kite or connect. Lingering Numbness will be your second best pick, being a nice bit of extra peeling on your Paralysis if needed. Moving on to Endurance Conduits, Harm Denial is your best one overall, helping out with extra self-healing. This also has good synergy with Reverse Harm if you have this PvP talent activated. Fortifying Ingredients will be the next best Endurance Conduit as it can give you a shield on use. 
This is excellent for preemptive usages during an enemy team's offensive setup, which could be the difference between life or death. In case you need a different choice, Condensed Anima Sphere is a new conduit that is a decent bonus to extra self-healing, increasing in strength as you gain more stamina. If you're Kyrian, then your talent tree should look something like this for Pelagos being the main soulbind tree to use. It gives you the freedom to swap the early rows in case you need File of Patience in niche situations. The other rows will most likely be mandatory most of the time. Forge Light will be your secondary soulbind tree, which should look like this. Remember, the sole purpose of choosing Forge Light is to pick up Sparkling Drift Globe Core against heavy burst teams which are mainly sub-rogue compositions. The only freedom you have is with the first and second row picking up Forge Light Filter if you aren't facing any priest compositions, due to mind games being a counter to this soulbind. As for Necrolord users, most of the time you'll be picking up Marilith having an excellent soulbind tree. Due to the nature of this tree, you probably won't be swapping any rows here as they are all favorable in most matchups. That leaves us with a many, which similar to Forge Light, will only mainly be picked for huge defensive reasons. Sulfuric Emission will be another great deterrent against sub rogues or teams that kill you in stun lock windows, which could be used in matchups if you desperately need it. The last step of building your character is sorting out the gear it holds. This includes having the right stats, trinkets, and legendary powers to choose from. When it comes to your stat priority, it would look something like this, having versatility being your most important stat followed by mastery. Critical Strike will be more preferable than Haste, with Haste being the stat you want to try and avoid. Versatility is the king stat in PvP due to the two set bonus of Trinkets. It makes it an excellent offensive and defensive stat for Windwalkers to have. As such, it is crucial to try and have this on every piece of gear, which should be easy to make it work due to the PvP vendors. Mastery buffs your pressure all the time, using different abilities all the time to keep it going. This will be your second best stat and an important one to try and keep active as much as possible. If you had to pick between Critical Strike or Haste, then go for Crit. It can give some value, whereas Haste gives very little to Windwalkers, seeing as you go Alpha Tiger most of the time which means any extra Haste will be pretty much be negligible. Conquest points should be used on weapons first as this is the most important gear piece to increasing your damage dramatically. One hand weapons will be easier to acquire early on, costing less conquest points. It also leads to slightly more overall damage, so you should buy a main hand early to increase your damage and have leftover points for other pieces of gear. A two hand weapon could be good as well. One handers are generally more overall DPS, but two handers will give bigger hits of damage on your rising sun kick and spinning crane kick, being preferred if you rely on more burst damage to win games. Generally though, you should only probably buy the one handers to begin with due to the cost of conquest points early on. But hopefully if you're lucky, you'll get a weapon from the greater vault. Unless you're a human windwalker, the medallion trinket will always take up one trinket slot, being the difference between life or death situations if used well. Human windwalker monks would choose relentless more often instead of the medallion in most situations. Situations. Medallion could instead be used here in situations where you need the extra trinket to survive the enemy team. Badge should be used often with your offensive CDs when you want to burst them heavily. Emblem will only be used into heavy burst teams because you need it to survive against these compositions as a windwalker. So if you're struggling to live against burst compositions, equip this trinket and use it when dropping low on health. As for your legendary choices as a windwalker, you mainly have two to choose from. Key for Skyreach is excellent against mobile targets that you need to chase in order to win, such as Affection Warlocks, Windwalkers, or even against Rogue Mage teams. Invoker's Delight is great against classes where you don't need the mobility and want the extra pressure, such as against SP teams. It's great for extra damage, which could be the difference in taking someone down. When it comes to macros, having these will significantly help with making your gameplay fluid. Focus or target macros will always be nice macros to have for any class. When it comes to Windwalker, having these on your Paralysis, Disarm, Interrupt, and Disable will be advised. Having these with Focus or Target macros are up to you. The only party macros you need nowadays are mainly for Detox and Tiger's Lust. As such, you should either have Party 1 and Party 2 macros, or additionally, you could have player name macros such as this one. That concludes this guide on Windwalkers in 9.1. Hope you all enjoyed this guide and feel free to add any comments or questions down below. Thanks for watching!